Tom Finney, revered and respected throughout the football world, is considered by many to be one of the greatest English footballers ever. His conduct both on and off the pitch brought him plenty of respect. Affectionately named the Preston Plumber by people in his hometown of Preston, where he lived all his life and played his entire career. There is a plethora of great English players such as Sir Bobby Charlton, Sir Stanley Matthews, Jimmy Greaves and more recently Gary Lineker, Paul Gascoigne, David Beckham and Alan Shearer who others claim are the best English footballers in the world. So let's answer the clap question. Can Sir Tom Finney be considered the greatest English footballer ever? Well, I've been asked this question so many times um, over the years and the answer is so simple, absolutely the greatest ever. Taking modern football into account, I suppose Lionel Messi comes very close in the reckoning in a different era for different times, but I very, very much doubt if Lionel Messi had been playing in Tom's time with the pitches we had to play on, he would have shown the skills that he shows that we see each day on the television. Without doubt, Tom Finney was the greatest player I have ever seen and fortunate enough to be with as a man. So Tom Finney is unquestionably the greatest player of his generation. The evidence for this is the way that people talk about him. Sir Stanley Matthews, playing at the same time as Sir Tom, suggested that he was one of the best. Sir Bobby Charlton, who played in the latter half of Sir Tom's career, said he was one of the greatest players he had ever seen. Arguably, the two greatest managers to have ever lived, Sir Alex Ferguson and Bill Shankly, both said that Finney was a class player. It will be easy for me to stand here and give you a list of people who have said great things about Sir Tom Finney. In fact, I could do that for all the top players in the world, both currently playing and no longer playing. There have been some brilliant players that have lived. Every generation has several players who, quite simply, take your breath away. We see it now with Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Neymar. I could go on. Researching this project, watching videos of Sir Tom Finney, his movement, his running with the ball, his skill, it simply took my breath away. In the 1950s he looked a class above the players he was coming up against. He looked an unbelievable player. Many players and managers have that view of him. Reading Harry Redknapp's autobiography, the comparison to greats of today are endless. Redknapp absolutely loves Finney. He says, I was lucky enough to see him play at his peak, playing centre forward for Preston against Arsenal one night. What a player. Finney could do the lot. Redknapp draws on Finney's comparisons with Messi today and he fully agrees. He feels that Sir Tom can certainly be considered in those categories of greats. As we saw earlier, so Stanley Matthews, a great from Finney's time, had him in the bracket of four all-time greats. Pelé, Maradona, Best, Di Stefano and Tom Finney. Matthews said, I think that says a lot about Finney. To be considered in the category of those greats tells you what to think of him. He is an absolutely class player. Greats talk affectionately about Finney. Sir Bobby Charlton, who certainly can be considered one of the contenders for the greatest English player to have lived, believes that Sir Tom was a fabulous player. But it is the reaction to his death that shows you truly what people thought of him. 
All the greats said how good he was. Stan Collymore said that Sir Tom was the greatest English player to have ever played football. Many said he was one of the greats. His impact on football cannot be understated. He truly was a world-class player. That I... I spent many hours with him, um, six seasons at Deep Bill, uh, many hours socially, um, and particularly in his later life before he passed away, but talking about his early days when we walked through Preston together, um, probably on a five minute walk to the destination, and it took half an hour because he, not me, was continuously stopped by people in the street. Uh, and at the funeral, uh, which was the biggest funeral Preston's ever had, of which I was fortunate enough to be able to attend, he, uh, oh well, uh, we did a television interview afterwards, after the whole thing had happened up at Deepdale, and I was worn out, I must have spoken to 500 people that day about what you, we are discussing now. And um, I got quite emotional at the end of it and I lost it. I couldn't do the interview properly. But uh, that's how he affected me. Uh, others, people in the street, Tom is now a folk hero. But it is not only Sir Tom's footballing ability that people talk about today. It is him as a person. People hold Sir Tom Finney in the highest esteem. Never to have been booked in his career may say a little about him. But you talk to the people of Preston and they all have a story about him. You hear people talk about his reaction to receiving his knighthood, to get an, an exhibition at the National Football Museum. It was that of a person who did not expect any of this. He almost did not want any of it. He simply loved playing football and was a true gentleman. He had time for anyone and for everyone. I have another little story just for a ring off. This, this, you said, what was he like as a man? That's the subject now. Uh, we, we met in town one day and he said, uh, Hello Eric, are you? where are you going? He said, uh, I'm going to the Rotary Club, which is, he attended regular. And he said, if I had time, we could have a coffee. He said, but I'm a bit, a bit short on time. He said, actually, I was short on time last week and I lost my parking place. He said, I had to park elsewhere. Now, bear in mind, he was a freeman of Preston. He could ta her take a herd of sheep through the centre of Preston if he wanted to. Now, when he was living, if he wanted to take a herd of sheep through it, he could have done. That's what a freeman of Preston is. He could do anything in Preston probably apart from committed murder and um, he said when I came out there was a parking ticket on it I said well with the position that you had as a freeman I said uh, no I said I thought I'd better pay it and he actually paid that parking ticket now does that sum up the man you know that's incredible I mean we all hate parking tickets I don't know if you've ever had one I've, fortunately I've only had one or two but as soon as you see it your heart gets a beat, misses a beat, you get angry for reasons that you've got a parking ticket. He just took it in his shrine, paid it and went on with his life. Now that was the man. Now, what can you say about that? You know... Alan Big summed it up on Twitter in his reaction to Sir Tom's death. R.I.P. Sir Tom Finney. He was 91. It seems no one, nobody heard a bad word about him. Never mind football greatness. That is some achievement. Without doubt, I cannot uh, put my own father at one side. He was the greatest man in my life. Influence-wise, respectful-wise, uh, being a local man, uh, uh, Barbara and Bryony's family are great friends of mine. I see them very regularly at the various functions. A player who certainly will give Sir Tom a run for his money is Sir Bobby Charlton. A Manchester United and England legend, recently holding both the Manchester United and England goal scoring record, only to be surpassed by Wayne Rooney in the last 12 months. For his records to have lasted over 50 years tells you how good a player he was. 
he was a natural goal scorer. You only wish you could have seen you only wish you could have seen him play today. He also would have been a fabulous player. Like Sir Tom, Sir Bobby finished his, finished his career here at Preston North End as player manager. His legendary status was gained when he fought back from his terrible injuries in a Munich air disaster to play again for Manchester United, a club he loved dearly. It was then cemented when he won the World Cup with England in 1966. The affection he has for Manchester United is seen by the naming of a stand after him, the Sir Bobby Charlton stand. There is no doubting that Sir Bobby Charlton is one of the best English players to have ever lived. People class him as the best English midfielder to have lived. That certainly is true. He was, a, he was fantastic. However, he is a different player to Sir Tom Finney in... Sir Bobby was a goal scorer. All the archive footage of Sir Bobby was of him scoring goal after goal, unlike Sir Tom, whose dribbling and running was unbelievable. I have seen no better player in full flow, apart from possibly Lionel Messi today. The second difference between Sir Tom and Sir Bobby is the fact that Sir Bobby won many things. Sir Tom did not win anything during his career, whereas Sir Bobby won the World Cup, three First Division titles, the European Cup and the FA Cup, to name a few bits of his success. He certainly is one of the very best English players to have lived. Bobby was one of the best footballers that I've ever seen and watched. And over his career, he was a one club man and he started there and became one of the greatest Manchester United players of all time. He was a man that had good control of the ball. He played more with body swerve and his shots were tremendous in the sense that he, he could hit the ball so hard. He also played for England and proved a great success. Um, he played in the World Cup won the World Cup with England in 1966. Four years later he was still playing in the World Cup for England and they were well on course beating Germany 2-0 and uh, Sir, Sir Alf Ramsey took Bobby off uh, thinking of resting him for the either the final or the semi-finals and of course when they took him off Franz Beckenbauer came into his own on the game and Germany knocked us out of that particular round 3-2. Uh, Bobby continued playing for Manchester United until 1973 uh, having at that time the record for appearances and the scoring of most goals and of course since then we know that it's been broken by uh, Wayne Rooney uh, and Ryan Giggs for the most uh, games. Nevertheless he still in football even today is highly respected and highly honoured and he received an OBE, a CBE and then he became Sir Bobby. So yes Bobby Charlton is one of the greatest players that Manchester United had that England has had and he's been a great ambassador for the game. Another brilliant English player who captained England to glory in the 1966 World Cup. He changed the English defensive game forever, changing the attitude from poop it out whenever you can to play it out from the back whenever you can. His tackle at the 1970 World Cup against Jorginho is legendary. He was a brilliant defender, almost certainly England's best ever central defender and probably one of the world's best. He can be considered one of the top ever English players. Alongside Franz Beckenbauer, he was named in the world team of the 20th century. One of the greatest players to have ever lived, Pele, considers more 
as the best defender he ever played against. High praise indeed. He, like Sir Tom, did not have the success that Sir Bobby Charlton had, winning only the FA Cup and the UEFA Winners' Cup with West Ham, but he did win the World Cup with England. This is an extremely difficult decision. The three players I have mentioned in this video, Sir Tom Finney, Sir Bobby Charlton and Bobby Moore, are my top three English players to have ever lived. Sir Tom is certainly the best forward in English football in history, Sir Bobby Charlton the best midfielder and Bobby Moore the best English defender to have ever lived. I would have loved to have seen those players today. Imagine how good they will be with the pitches of today, the balls of today, the boots of today, even the physiotherapy of today. They would have been world beaters. Older folks talk of players from back then being worth double the players of today. And I agree, in this inflated transfer market today, these players would have been commanding fees upwards of 100 million. I think the conditions that these players played in and the lives that they led is what makes them so special. Sir Tom Finney lived and worked as a plumber, playing for Preston on a Saturday usually after having worked in the morning. They, these players' wages did not make them different. They lived as a normal person, nothing flashy like today. I think that it is telling that the players in my top three, probably top five even, are not players of today. They do not just have to work anywhere near as hard to get to the top. The boots were hard toed with nail in studs which were consisted of a, a bottom piece that was nailed on, a smaller piece that was nailed on and a smaller piece to give the length of the stud, all nailed on. They didn't help with balance and all the things that mattered because if you got it wrong for the wrong, your, your, your movement wasn't right. But breaking the boots in you had to have two buckets of water, one hot, one cold, one boot in to warm it up into the cold to cool it, to four or five times, same with the left foot. That was one day and it took seven to ten days to get that boot to look like it belonged to you. Then um, we played the first game in them uh, which obviously put a lot more strain on and the inevitable blisters appeared and then they had a bath, uh, uh, three inches deep, of tin on the floor, maybe a yard square, full of methylated spirits. And with these angry open blisters, you stood in this bath of methylated spirits for as long as you could, without leaping out, <laughs> uh, to make the blisters pure and uh, harden up the feet. Uh, not a pleasant uh, experience that, but nevertheless, we all went through it. That contract went for one year. Now, at the end of that year, whatever they wanted to do with it, like the old men at mill owners in the times gone by, they could just sacrifice you like that, just get rid of it. There was no... Um, consideration about that you were a human being and it's all about human rights these days you could be sent out without a job and that was it so you're reliant on your skill and your development and that's where Sir Tom came in with me he could see that I had the skill and he did the development and that's where he helped me and he uh, was responsible really for me staying those six seasons because he showed me what to do and how to do it Um, the start of the season, okay, grass was okay, but it wore away rather quickly with matches because there were two games, uh, a game every week played on it plus a practice game and they were nothing like the quality that they are today and of course the seasonal changes that this country provides uh, 
made them rather difficult in the back end of the year. And uh, they used to go into mud packs, basically mud packs. come to the ball well we used to call it the hated 18 panel McGregor which was leather not coated took on water like a spin dryer takes it out of the clothing and I can uh, I can remember a, a very particular incident ju just describes that it was a central league game one was a first division game at Deepdale and our goalkeeper hadn't got a long kick he had to kick high to get distance and it's coming towards me and I saw this heavyweight bomb coming out of the sky and I saw the water spinning out of it like a spin dry because the ball always spins when it's in the air and I was not, I'm definitely not heading this I thought, lay it drop at the last because I thought I'll kill it dead and it'll drop into the mud this chap playing behind me is pushing me in the back with his chest I thought well, surely he's not going to head it and at last minute he pushed me right underneath it and it fell and hit me on top of the head. I was unconscious, went out, couldn't see anything and I'm looking at the ground for my teeth, thinking all my teeth had gone and snapped together. Anyway, I got up and I couldn't see. Haze, just a haze. Finish the game. Today they take you off you're examined by a doctor and you're examined before your next match and if, if they don't, they, they, you, you don't play. I played a game the following uh, two days later. In answer to my question, can Sir Tom Finney be considered the greatest English footballer ever? I believe yes, he can. Sir Bobby Charlton is a brilliant player and he has won many things during his career. But even Sir Bobby admits that Sir Tom Finney was one of the greatest ever footballers to have lived. Sir Tom Finney simply takes my breath away when I watch him play. He looks a brilliant, unbelievable player. Both as a man and as a footballer, he was a class act. The reaction to his death also told you how much people thought about him. His loyalty to Preston North End was unwavering, spending his career there, something that you do not see very often today. The only reason more people do not consider him the very best is the fact he did not win a major trophy during his career. He, had he won the first division, a European Cup or the World Cup, like Sir Bobby Charlton or Bobby Moore, he will be considered right up there with the very best Englishmen and perhaps even with the very best players to have lived.